Hey guys, Eric here from Fired Up Brews and Barbecues, and today we're gonna do some St. Louis style spare ribs, and we're gonna do some chicken thighs. Of course, the chicken thighs will cook a lot faster than the spare ribs, so we're gonna get those ribs on first. These are just, both these are from Costco. I'm gonna do a couple of the slabs with the Killer Hogs barbecue rub, and I'm gonna do one slab. This here is the Honey Hot Meat Church barbecue, Honey Hot barbecue from Meat Church. And then on the uh, chicken, we're gonna do half yard bird, real good stuff, half chupacabra. And the beer of choice today is Surly Furious IPA out of Minneapolis, really good stuff, real hoppy. It's gonna be a fun day, it might rain, but that's not gonna stop us. Let's get started. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take the membranes off of these. Um, if you know how to do it, this will be real simple. I'm just going to do a quick demonstration. So you got, I've got three slabs of uh, St. Louis style pork spare ribs, and we're going to take this membrane off the backside of each of those. One second, stay tuned. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take a paper towel, dry paper towel. You got, I already kind of started this membrane. You can see right here. You're going to put that paper towel right on the back side of it. And you're going to try to get that paper towel to stick onto that membrane, get under it, and you can just pull most of it off. If it doesn't all, all, come all the way off in the first try, just do that same process again. You can get it off. You can also cut it off with a knife. You can also score it. I'll show you what the scoring looks like. This is what like some of the restaurants like Famous Dave's does if they are doing a lot of ribs or whatever. This is kind of a bad cut on the spare if they cut the top of this off, the Costco Butcher. When you score it, all you do is take a sharp knife and you're literally just cut like that and like that and just, it's called scoring it. And that'll also work too on the membrane. So if you can remove them, it's always the best. But if you're in a hurry, if you're doing a lot of cooks, you can do this scoring technique as well. The last thing you're gonna do on these ribs, guys, just any of this extra fat, I like to cut that kind of stuff off. Now you don't have to if you don't want to, but if you see like big chunks like this, where do they, you know, like here, you can cut some of that off. Just take a, a sharp knife. Usually use a better knife than what I got here, but you just cut all that off. So I'm gonna do that and uh, get everything prepped. And then I will be back when we season the ribs. All right, once you have the membrane off or if you score it, whichever you choose, you go ahead and, and trim as much fat. You can see I did most of the fat off of this. There's a little bit in here, but this is about what you want it. You want some fat on there. So we're gonna smoke this for five or six hours. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the rub and I'll show you how I do that. You wanna go not too aggressive, but I see a lot of guys that don't put enough rub on their meat before they smoke. So you wanna make sure you have the, the proper amount. I'm gonna show you what mine look like here in one second. Okay, so I've got the killer hogs barbecue rub. I'm gonna show you how I apply this. You wanna basically take your hand and this stuff's expensive, so you don't wanna waste it. Take your hand and you kinda of use that as a, a ledge and you apply it on like that and go all the way around. But this is how thick you should do it, about like this. You don't wanna waste it, you don't wanna to go too thick, but you wanna cover it and have a nice coverage all the way across. I'll come back and show you what they look like when I'm all done. All right, so that's what they'll look like when they're all done. You can see if you pick it up in the air, not a lot of that rub is gonna fall off. And you can see that there, there's sugar in this rub, so you're seeing the meat start to sweat a little bit. But that's the kind of coverage you want. Cover it all the way, even cover the sides. You turn on the side. And I did both sides, front and back. This one here is the, the Meat Church Honey Hot Barbecue. I went a little bit thicker with that one. And I, if you saw earlier, this one, this slab is cut a little bit weird. It's cut a little bit narrow. So I used this, this different rub on here. It'll be easy to tell which one's which. Obviously, it'll have a little diff different color as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go get the smoker started. You know, depending on what smoker you're using and what you're cooking, you might wanna start the, the smoker ahead of time. In this case, we're using a pellet smoker today. We're using the Yoder YS640. And those things get you know heated up so fast that it's not going to be a big deal. We're going to smoke this. So we're looking at spare ribs. We're going to, we're going to turn the order at 250 degrees, cook it for four to five hours. You're looking for an internal temperature of 175 degrees. So if you're using a fireboard or maybe your Yoder has a built-in fireboard or using a different smoker or, or whatever it is, 175 degrees is what you normally want to get that internal temperature to, uh, to when you're smoking uh, St. Louis style pork ribs. So I'm going to go get the smoker fired up and we're going to get these bad boys on. These are going to smoke for a couple of hours and then we're going to throw the chicken thighs on for the last three hours or so and they'll, they'll smoke together. 
All right, guys, this is a Yoder YS640 model. I'll give you a quick tour of this if you're not familiar. It's a pellet smoker. Today I'm using a, a gourmet barbecue blend. You can use whatever pellet you like. There's lots of different kinds. We've got it at 250 degrees. Now the top rack is where I'm gonna put the ribs right away. And you can see I have tin foil down here in the diffuser. You don't have to do that. It's just, it's not really that big of a deal if it gets dirty down there. Um, sometimes I just like to do it when there's like chicken, for example, chicken thighs have a lot of grease and it just kind of helps prevent uh, kind of a disaster. So it's up to you on that. But you can see I keep my, my grill pretty clean. You got the top grate here. This thing pulls all the way out. And then these come out. There's a diffuser under here so you can do hot steaks and stuff. So this there's a square right here that actually pulls out. And I've got another video that I'll be making that does an intro, kind of just a, a quick overview of what the, the Yoder YS640 looks like. But you can see the smokestack here I've got turned because we're underneath a little covered spot. So it helps direct the smoke out a little bit. Uh, there's the back side of it. Just This is at the stainless steel shelves. But it's a real nice smoker. It looks really good. You can get different colors and things. But this is what we're using today to do our, our ribs and, uh, and chicken thighs. So normally what I like to do, I like to usually do the bone in with the skin on them for the thighs. But what we got this time is we got the, uh, so these are going to be boneless, skinless chicken thighs. So we have to be a little bit careful with these because they'll dry out a lot faster. Um, what we're going to do is take, we have to get two different bowls here. The bowl on the left, I'm going to use this uh, yard bird that I showed you earlier. And then on the right, we're going to use the, the chupacabra. And I'm just going to basically sprinkle this in like so and use my hands and kind of work it in so it's all covered. Okay, so everything is ready to go. So what I did is I got the smoker warmed up while I was seasoning the chicken. You're gonna take this chicken and you're gonna seal it back up and you're gonna put it in the fridge because you're not gonna need it for a couple more hours. All right, back at the smoker, we got it at 250. It's actually at 272 degrees. Sometimes there's temperature swings, of course, when you get it started up. But I'm just wearing, you don't have to wear this, but I'm wearing it. And we're just gonna take these, we're gonna use our hands, we're gonna throw them right on the top. I'll show you what it looks like here in one second. All right, I got them on. There's a couple ways you can do this. The problem with, these are really long racks and they actually don't fit very well this way. So I've got them kind of spread on the top and we'll want to rotate these a couple of times and then flip them as well. Once they cook a little bit, usually they shrink and then you can, you can actually have them on your smoker this direction. The other alternative, of course, is you can put them on the bottom rack and you obviously have a lot more room to work with. I like smoking stuff on the top rack, just a little bit more indirect heat. So it usually works a little better, but now the easy part, sit back, relax, have a drink, let the cooker do the work for you. Uh, Ribs? Ribs. Yeah. All right. Ooh, looking good. About an hour and a half, two hours so far. We're about ready to flip those on the other side. Ooh. Looking yeah. good, what do you think? They look pretty good. You gonna eat those? Uh, big chow. <laughs> Ribs are coming together real nice here, guys. We're gonna throw the chicken on. I'm gonna throw it on the bottom. So that way we don't have the chicken, you know, dripping on top of the meat. We're gonna put the the raw chicken on the bottom here. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we got the chicken in. I did two things. I, I took the, put the chicken on. I also turned the temperature down to about 200 degrees. I'm just going to let this get some smoke for about an hour. You'll notice that I have these kind of close together, not on top of each other, but you want them somewhat close. You just don't want them to dry out because these don't have any bones on them. So you just have them kind of close together enough where they're still going to get smoke, but they can kind of stay together and keep some of that moisture in. Time to flip these bad boys. I'm gonna flip. Looking good, huh? We're gonna just go ahead and flip all these thighs. Okay, we're at 300 degrees inside here. I'm gonna pull everything off here. So these thighs turned out amazing, like way better than I ever imagined without bone in. I've never actually done uh, thighs like this without bone in. You can see how tender they are. I mean, look at that. It's crazy, so good. And it smoked all the way through there. So 
those are ready to go. I'm not going to put any sauce on. You could put sauce on here if you want. I'm not going to put any sauce on the thighs. What I'm going to do is pull everything off here. I'm going to get this grill really hot and I'm going to caramelize these ribs. Stay tuned. All right, here's the thighs. Amazing. So good. Look at that. So these are just going to rest for a little bit. The ribs are going to go back on and get caramelized. I'm not going to sauce the chicken. I'm going to sauce the ribs. I'm going to use Firebug. This is the mild. This is fruit infused. Actually has raspberries and blackberries infused. So it's it's a really really good barbecue sauce. Um, I'm going to put that on the ribs here. So right now the smoker is getting up to. Uh, 400 degrees. We're gonna get that up to temperature. We're gonna pop the ribs back on. All we're gonna do is sauce one side. We're gonna caramelize, flip, caramelize, and we're good to go. Getting her up to 400. We're at 338. All right, guys. 400 degrees. See that? Whew. Gotta be fast here. Hard, hard to do with one hand. We're gonna do a little bit of angle here. Cover that really good on all three. You're gonna close the lid and you're gonna let that caramelize. We're gonna flip and we're gonna do it on the other side. What's gonna happen is that high heat, we're just gonna get that high heat on there, get a nice little base on this top level, all right? Try to cover it real good, be as fast as you can. All right guys, all you're gonna do is just get that a little bit, give it like a minute, maybe two minutes. Now you're gonna flip that, you that sizzle. That's what you want, you wanna caramelize that sauce on both sides without burning it. Right now we've got really good color. Here we go. Now we're going to sauce again. I'm going to sauce this backside. Please don't go quite as heavy on the backside. We just want a little bit of sauce in there. All right, guys. That is going to look beautiful. Test. You don't want them to completely fall off the bone. You want them to have a little bit of pull. That right there. That's a good rib. That's going to be cooked perfectly right there. That's what you want. All right. So what you want to do? See these bones right here? It makes it easy when you see the bones. When you can't, you look for these little bumps. So what you want to do is take this knife. And you're just going to cut between each bone. You're just cutting along these bones on that line. You see, you see where that is right there. You have to figure out, you kind of get a knack for it. You gotta go at an angle, kind of cut down right there. See that? Let's just give one of these a try because it looks pretty good. See that? Drop it on the floor. <laughs> My wife likes that. See that? Comes right out. Just pull off the bone, it's not fall off the bone. That's how you do a St. Louis style rib right there. Really good.